Good evening everybody, welcome to parents and our graduating class of 2020. I'm delighted to welcome you here to our virtual graduation and thank you to Mr Harrison and the team who really worked hard to put this together and make it as special as we possibly can given the current circumstances. Let me start by saying I know that this final term of school has not been what you expected or indeed what you would have hoped for. We have missed out on all of the fun of water fights, undoubtedly. However, I have been exceptionally proud to watch how you as a class have really grown and been incredibly resilient to the, to the changes that have happened and the challenges that you have faced. I know that you were very disappointed not to be able to sit the IB exams, but equally I am very hopeful that you will all receive the grades that you deserve and have worked extremely hard for during the last two years. I want to acknowledge that isolation is hard. Being isolated from um, your friends and from everyday life has been incredibly difficult. I've shared in some of that um, challenge as well, so I can certainly, certainly speak from experience. But what I have seen is you continue to grow. And I've been really impressed with the um, encouragement and the um, confidence that you've shown during the time that you've been engaged with the bridging curricula, the opportunities for university courses, and of course, the Grad Prix. It's been wonderful to see you grow creatively, to take part in um, new challenges around art and literature, and to be thinking about how to become more and more independent. And isn't it wonderful that some of you now can also load a washing machine and keep the light separate from the darks? Absolutely a key skill when you go to university. Joking aside, this, these strange circumstances will also have led to you having time to reflect on the kind of person you are and what you want to be as you move forward in life. Certainly great things can happen in isolation. Paul Cezanne said that if isolation tempers the strong, it is the stumbling block of the uncertain. You are incredibly resilient and you are very determined young people. You've shown that in your studies for the IB and I've no doubt that you will continue to achieve great things as you move forward. And this time and these challenges will help shape and grow. You as people, as you do, continue to grow. And your story is still just beginning. So you have this amazing opportunity to start those new chapters right now. We know that in the past, great things have happened in isolation. We've seen that. We've seen that phrase used a lot recently. We know that during the, um, the bubonic plague, for example, when the theatres were closed, just as they're closed now in London in the West End, Shakespeare turned to writing. And during this period, he created great plays such as Macbeth, King Lear and Antony and Cleopatra. And I know you will grow to love Shakespeare once the horrors of your GCSE literature exam and your IB studies are behind you. Shakespeare wrote a play where the characters were shipwrecked on an island and they had to wait a long time for re recovery. And just as that rescue was imminent, Miranda, one of the main characters of the play, expresses optimism. She says, how beauteous mankind is, or brave new world that has such people in it. And you are those people. You are those people of this brave new world. And I'm so proud to have been part of that development and know you as you've grown and developed over the last few years. Imagine how you will feel now as you move forward in this chapter. We're finally starting to see some normality return to our lives. You can once again be hopeful of what the future will bring. I want to finish with one more quote from Shakespeare really important. He said, to thine own self be true. It's so important that in the decisions you make, you consider what makes you special, what makes you unique. Try to always do what you love and love what you do. Good luck everybody. We've certainly been incredibly privileged to know you all and I couldn't be more proud of this graduating class of 2020. 2020 has been an unpredictable year, to say the least. We went from looking at World War III memes online in January to taking photos in our grad gowns and hats thinking we were actually going to be able to wear them, to then receiving our varsities and hoodies and arguing with Miss Watson about how soon we'd be able to wear those, thinking again that we'd be able to do that, to now having an online graduation. I think it's safe to say that none of us ever saw this coming. On our first day of IB, when we made those little marshmallow towers and 
had the IB team try their best to condense the absolute horror that TOK is into one introductory presentation, I'm sure not one of us would have ever been able to predict that this would be the conclusion or the turnout of the two years that we spent working very hard and trying our very best. I think we're all familiar with the phrase, IB is a marathon, not a sprint. It's usually used to encourage students not to cram, not to stay up all night right before an IA or EE deadline, which I'm sure none of us did, of course. And I think it's all well and good to say that the IB is a marathon, not a sprint. But I think at the same time, it's a marathon that we all thought we'd run together, one that we thought we'd be able to complete, rather than one where we've fallen at the last hurdle and had to stay at home wearing masks and gloves instead of throwing our caps in the air and celebrating the way that we all intended to. We all wish we had a real graduation, a real prom, a real anything, a time and place for us to celebrate our achievement of making it through high school together. And sadly, we haven't gotten it yet. And we don't know when we're going to get it, but we'll go on. We always have through the two years of IB, then before that, the two years of GCSE, and the however many before that, we've always continued. And we need to. We're entering a world that's different than what we've always known. And it's a world that needs us. It needs us to be kind to each other and the world we live in. It needs us to foster communities that build each other up and understand the struggles that others are facing. And it needs us to use this time wisely. That doesn't necessarily mean to be the most productive you've ever been and do online courses 24 seven, because that's just not realistic. But we can use this precious time to spend the extra few weeks with friends and family before going off to college. Who knows when that's going to be, months or even a year. Uh, you can also use this time to focus on yourself, figuring out what you truly believe is important to you. Focus on what values you want to live by. We can sit here in fear of the things to come and the uncertainty of it all, or we can look at it as an opportunity an opportunity to face the so-called real world. And we as class of 2020 cannot just survive out there, but thrive and achieve greatness. Wiz shaped us for it, making it through the countless corridor assemblies, sitting cross-legged, bunched up together, or the sigh of relief and joy after hearing the elephants are eating bananas after the countless lockdown practices. We're gonna leave a mark, whether it's amongst a few friends or millions across the world. If I knew that March 5th was going to be my last day of Wellington, I'd give anything to just stand outside the back gate talking to my friends for a little bit longer, or to hear the IB heads shout at us for talking during our study periods. I'd give anything to just be in school right now, sitting in the Falcon Center amongst all of you. Thank you for everything. Pandemic or not, as seniors, we'd be leaving high school with a lot of questions, like, what job am I going to have? Who am I going to end up with? Who are my new friends going to be? How am I going to survive without my best friends from high school? And if you think about it, the pandemic just adds a couple dozen more to the bunch. Like, are we going to survive? Am I gonna to go to university? Am I gonna be able to leave the country? And when will I get to say goodbye to my friends, if ever? Now that this chapter of our life is rapidly drawing to a close, we're all expecting things to go back to normal. And to us, normal is just the way that things were before, the way that things should be. We're expecting to go to university, live normal lives, and within the first year of university, have all these questions about our life and the way our life is going to play out answered. But the reality is that that isn't how it's going to be. The fact that we're living through a literal global pandemic right now which is ravaging the world inside out, is a testament to the change that we're all experiencing, not just us as the class of 2020, but all of us. And it's up to us, the current youth, the class of 2020, to make sure that all of these changes, all of this restructuring that is currently going on is a change for the better, rather than a change for the worse. So I urge you to stay curious, to stay aware, and to keep asking questions keep pushing for answers. Because the world as we know it isn't going to change itself. But 
you already know that, being some of the brightest and most inquisitive people I've ever known. So as head girl, I have another message for you, one that hopefully will be more useful in this time of crisis. And that is, don't fill in the blanks for yourself. We've lived our lives in relative luxury here, worrying about mostly first world concerns. And we're about to be thrown into a new age, not just of our lives, but also the world in general as a society. A new age of difficulty and of restructuring and above all of change. I think we have a tendency now and potentially in the future to hold on to ideas of the past, of how things should have been, how things should be. Like how we should have ended our senior year with Leaver's Day, how we should have celebrated prom, and how this speech should have been given to you live. But with that being said, these shoulds only do one thing, and that is distract us from experiencing the way that things are now and appreciating the way that they'll turn out. Quarantine during the corona era is a lot like IB. Tiring, kind of isolating, not very good for our social lives, exhausting, and it makes us all lose sleep. But like IB, it'll be worth it in the end because it'll propel us towards where we want to go. And we'll look back at it, hopefully, and appreciate the way that it led us to where we are now, even if we can't laugh about it. So I urge you all to stay curious, but also to know when to leave the answer box blank. Because only once you have all the answers, which we all will at some point in the future, only then can you really appreciate the way that things turned out. Good evening, year 13, and what an evening it is. It's your graduation. It's the end of two fantastic years, maybe more. For some of you, it's the end of 15 fantastic years at Gems Wellington International School. And I know that I speak for, my, for myself, but also on behalf of the IB team when I say what, what a fantastic um, time we've had looking after you guys to a certain extent, but working with you as well through everything that we've been through collectively, everything that we've achieved um, in terms of what you've achieved as, as people and also what you've achieved academically as well and what you'll go on to achieve. Some really, really, really fantastic stories from each of you guys individually. Um, and although we recognise you guys as a collective, I really want to, to hold on to that thought of you as, as individuals as well and as people who are going to go out into the world and do amazing things and we, we're just um, privileged to have been a part of that and it's not the way that we on, we wanted to end it but we are where we are and we're all at home because of the global situation so um, we wish you all the best moving forwards. I want you to, to try and take away a little bit of a, of a nugget and those of you who were in my business and management class have heard this when we looked at motivation and I want to tell you a story and I want you to take away from this how the question of how, how much do you want it? How much do you really, really, really want something? Because that matters. That matters greatly. Uh, and you really, really, really wanted 
to do well in your IB study and that's why you're here graduating for which we congratulate you but this is a story about a man uh, a man and a guru and the young man he was about 18 years of age and the guru um, he wanted to get some inspiration and he went to the guru and said to the guru I, I want to make a lot of money I want to be really 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 wealthy and that's what I want I want to take that away with me and the guru said to him if you want to be really wealthy I want you to meet me on the beach tomorrow morning 4 a.m. and the young man said well that's fantastic that's great I'll, I'll meet him on the beach and it'll be 4 a.m. but he'll tell me how to be really 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 wealthy so he meets him at 4 a.m. there's nobody there on the beach there's just the two of them and he's got his suit and shirt and tie on as the young man and the, and the, the guru's there and he, and he says to him, well, come out into the water with me. So they walk out into the water together and they get about knee height. And the guru says, keep coming. And they walk out further into the water. And by this time, it's kind of approaching his shoulder level. And he's thinking, well, like this is a bit crazy. My, not only is my, my, my expensive suit getting ruined, but I'm walking out into the water and I wanted to make money. That's why I'm here. That's why I wanted to speak to this guy. Um, and he takes him out further and further until the water's lapping around his face. And the guru takes the guy and he dunks him under the water. And he thinks, well, this is quite strange. He's under the water. And then he starts realising that actually he, he, he needs to breathe. And he starts splashing around and splashing around and he's running out of air. At that point, the guru brings him up out of the water. And he says to him, at that moment, what did you want to do? And the young man replied back to him and he said, I wanted to breathe. And if you want something as much as you want to breathe, then you will go out and you will be successful. And he didn't promise him money, but he said he will be successful. And so my question to you is how successful do you want to be? And how much do you want that? Because you can achieve absolutely anything that you want anything that you want there are people in your year group that have published books there are people in your year group that have have raised incredible amounts of money for charity there are people in your year group that are going to go on to do far greater things than you can ever possibly imagine and I ask you how much do you want it and if you want it as much as that young man wanted to breathe at that moment in time you'll be successful Want it for yourself, want it for your family, want it also to provide for others. And I want you to take that away with you. Know that we will miss you greatly. We wish you all the best in everything that you go on to do. But also know that we'll be here for you in whatever way, shape or form, be that digitally, remotely or in person in school. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak at your graduation, class of 2020. Many speeches like this will often start with the cliché phrase of where do I start? And I find that quite an interesting um, concept in terms of a speech. My default would be to say that the natural place for me to start is back in classroom 232 on the English corridor, when I welcome 27 of you as Year 9 students into your first English lesson with me back when I started at school in 2015. And that proved to be a fantastic start of my time and my career at WIS. From 2016 to 2018, I worked with many of you as Year 10 students and then on into Year 11 as GCSE students in my role as an assistant head teacher um, looking after the students in Key Stage 4. 
And even though you presented some challenges for me, um, it was only because you were so conscious of making a really good start to your time um, as post-16 students on the IB curriculum here at WIS. So you're now the class of 2020 and you have arrived at the start, not the end. Yes, it might be the end of your physical time at WIS, but it is very much the start of putting into practice everything that WIS has taught you. It's about now starting conversations, starting journeys and courses, all brand new for you. Starting opportunities to develop into you, building on those foundations that WIS has provided. So to end my speech today, I look forward to hearing about all of the starts that you have made. Emily Dickinson, a famous American author and poet, stated that we turn not older with years, but newer every day. And even though an end, I wish you all the best for the start. Thank you. I stood up in front of you countless times over the past two years in a constant attempt to impart some sort of wisdom. Whether it's to develop your work ethic, avoid the procrastination monkey, or persuade you that you don't really want that study leave. However, today you can finally relax and you'd think that I have nothing left to say. But in truth, there's a million of things I want to tell you, but I brought it down to the top 10 hacks. First, collaborate. None of you would be here right now without collaborating with lots of other people. The teachers, your peers, your parents have all been part in getting you here to this proud day. Continue this approach in everything you do. Find a way to collaborate. Join the student union, netball team, radio station. If there isn't a club you fancy, set one up. If there is an issue you believe needs tackling, seek people to collaborate with. Everything's not only easier, but much more enjoyable as a team. If you haven't already done so, set up a family WhatsApp group. Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook make the world a much smaller place. You may be about to move away from home, but your family unit will always be with you. A group chat about how your siblings are driving your parents to distraction can be just what you need to make you smile and remind you that you'll never be alone. Be kind and helpful whenever and however you can. It doesn't have to cost a thing, but giving someone a lift, holding open the door or offering a shoulder to cry on can make someone else's day. Lead in paying kindness forward, and not only will other people treat you in kind, but they'll think what a lovely world we live in. Number four, if in doubt, eat chocolate. Laugh a lot, even when facing hard times, find something that will make you giggle. Surround yourself with people that not only cheer you on, but will not take, will help you not take life too seriously. You've had a tough year. It's almost broken many of us at times, and I could always hear laughter coming from the Falcon Centre, I knew you'd be okay. Ask questions. I think the theory of knowledge has taught you to be excellent at asking questions and not taking anything at face value. Hold on to this skill, now more than ever. Ask questions about the articles you read and the TV you watch. Ask questions when at university and in your place of work. And probably most importantly, ask questions of yourself and be truthful with the answer. Take 10 mindful minutes. Some days you'll feel like you can't do it all, so don't. Stop, breathe, cast your mind back to bend best, allow yourself to step back, relax your mind and be present in the moment. 10 minutes can be all you need to reset your mind and get you back on track. Number eight, no good decision was ever made after 2 a.m., just go to sleep. Be 
global citizens, being educated in an international setting like Dubai is going to give you huge advantages. You've had your minds opened to a whole lot of experiences and cultures, and this is, can only continue as you move out of your family home to new countries with new people and new experiences. Be globally responsible when making decisions. Stand up for what you feel is right and lead on other things in a new light. And finally, enjoy your journey through life. Don't rush it. There's no finish line and you have to reach. I know we spent the, we've spent the last year discussing your future and planning what's next, but please take time to pause and take in what's around you. Have a good chat on the phone with a friend you haven't spoken to in ages. Don't just take that picture of that lovely sunset. Sit and watch it. Enjoy. The friends I sat with on my graduation day, my friends for life. They are the people I shared great achievement with as well as monumental failures. No matter where we are in the world, we all share a bond and we know we can turn to each other in times of real moments of crisis. At our graduation, we were bond by great, we were bond by great affection, by our shared experience and memories that will stay with us for life. Today, I wish the same for you and in the words of Mark Twain, 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than the ones you did. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from safe harbour, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. So starting today, class of 2020, don't miss a moment. Year 13, parents and teachers. When I finally got around to putting together my speech for this unique graduation, I was initially excited. An opportunity to talk about one of my favourite year groups ever. I'd been thinking about this speech for a long time as your IB coordinator, although in all honesty, I never imagined myself delivering it from my living room. As I started to think about what to say about you as a cohort, I very quickly got stuck. How on earth do I condense two years of brilliance, hard work and achievements into a short speech? How do I talk about everything from crazy haircuts to Celine and Jay's excellent leadership as head boy and head girl? The bottom line is you're a fantastic group of students who've achieved great things. We've seen you organise events such as TEDx, Wiz has Got Talent and an eco fashion show, write and record podcasts, write blogs, shoot each other at paintballing, Collaborator at Ave Ventura, score and carry placards at the golf, sing and dance your heart out at Christmas karaoke, mentor younger students, support staff at events, lead backstage teams for school productions, complete university applications to some of the best universities in the world, all while studying for one of the most challenging post-16 programmes in the world. You have continuously impressed us with your determination to succeed and your resilience, particularly during this challenging time. It's not the end of school any of us had envisaged for you, but we have admired the way you've risen to the challenge of preparing for university at home. We've thoroughly enjoyed watching your culinary skills improve, along with your ability to do the washing successfully, your TikToks, even though I'm still not sure I fully understand them, and your thirst for knowledge through online courses and reading. The drive and personality that you possess as a year group will take you far, I'm sure. What will we miss? We will miss hearing you laugh in the Falcon Centre. 
Although I'm sure you won't miss us coming out to tell you to pipe down, we will miss the laughter and hearing you chatting about what happened at the weekend. We'll miss your determination to have your voices heard and to stand up for what you believe in, like wearing your graduation hoodies from the second they arrived in school. We'll miss your general banter and shenanigans, yes Shiv, I'm looking at you, and we'll miss your inability to make a cup of tea tidily, but we will also miss the cups of tea and coffee you made for us. We will miss coming back from a lesson to our offices full of students ready to tell us something. And we will also miss a near daily ritual performed by a certain group of students who seem to always need to get hold of Mr. Harrison. Their method, come into the office. We must remember at this point that the office has a glass wall and ask, is Mr. Harrison here? My standard response, let me just check under the desk. I've heard it said that people come into our lives for a reason. You've been a very special year group for me, class of 2020. When I arrived in Dubai four years ago, a majority of you were in year 10, and I found myself the head of MFL on the year 10 corridor. I got to know you over time and you showed me the ropes as I watched you develop and mature. When it was time for you to move to the Falcon Centre and pick up some new recruits, I moved there with you. We then had a further two years together, and as you grew, I grew too. Now it is time for both you and I to move on to our next adventures. And whilst we won't be in the same place, I know you will all be there with me, in the words of Wicked, like a handprint on my heart. There are so many things we will miss and remember you for, class of 2020. You have been awesome. Now all that remains for me to say is, please do not open your graduation books until I instruct you to do so. Does anyone have any questions about the next steps? Please do keep asking, we want to hear about your next adventures. Does anyone have any unauthorised material in his or her possession? Are the subject level and language of your graduation correct? Je pense que oui. Do you have everything you need for graduation? I strongly recommend a good slice of cake and a loving hand to hold. After I finish this instruction, you will have some contemplation time. During this time, you are not allowed to write, refer to a dictionary, highlight questions, or use a calculator. I would advise you use this time to think about your time at WIS and reflect on the human being you have become. What are your next steps going to be? What will, what will you take with you to your new life at university? What will you cherish the most from your time at school? We're very sad to see you go, Year 13. You've been phenomenal, and we just cannot wait to see what you do next. You may now open your graduation books. Firstly, I want to say congratulations and well done, you've made it. I know this is probably not the most conventional graduation, but it's yours, so I hope you enjoy it. 
It's been a pleasure to be the IBCP coordinator this year, supporting students and guiding you with your university choices, celebrating successes with IBCP students, getting offers from Durham and Exeter University in the UK and Waterloo and York in Canada, among many more. You have shown that IBCP students do get into top universities through your hard work. The nature of the IBCP course has been a benefit to the way many of you learn and have, and have developed. So well done. Through these challenging times, you will become much more resilient than you possibly knew you would ever have to be. If someone had said to you a year ago that you'd be playing board games with your parents for your graduation party, you would have laughed in their face. There is one benefit to digital graduation, is that you can fast forward through all the speeches, but of course, no one would do that. I know through your journey at WIS, you've all become well-rounded global citizens who are ready to take on any new challenge, however that may be during these times. Today, you finally get to say goodbye to a chapter of your life that you will look back on fondly. We race through school only to get to the next chapter and it seems like forever at the time. And then you look back and it seems like a flash. When I think of my graduation and starting university, I couldn't wait to be independent and start on my pathway that opened up so many doors for me. Take the time to enjoy the journey, the highs and the lows. Make best friends, find out who you really are and study hard. But most of all, enjoy it because soon you will be graduating again and wondering how that time went by so quickly. Congratulations and all the best for the future graduating class of 2020.